Hi, this is Dan again from Clean Guru. And today we want to pick up where we left off last time talking about this hot potato of consumable supplies, poly paper supplies. So things like hand towels, hand soap, trash liners, and toilet paper. So uh, the question is, what strategies are there that could maybe help when you're asked to provide them? Uh, the first strategy, of course, is the one we liked the most, which was we didn't mind tracking and ordering the supplies and stocking them, but every time we did, we would send a separate invoice to them charging for that case. So that charge to them was a cost plus, so a little bit of a profit margin. In doing that, we always knew we were protected. No matter how much they used or if we had changes in our cost, we could reflect that and we were okay. So that's the first thing we liked the most. But sometimes you're kind of pressed and they don't want you to do that. And they say, no, no, I don't want to bill by case as you do this. I want you to include it in your monthly price. That's a little bit tougher pill to swallow. That's a tough one. So here's some strategies to help with that. First thing, of course, is there are some consumable poly paper uh, cost or usage calculators. Big supply houses and, and paper manufacturers and chemical manufacturers have these consumable poly paper usage um, calculators. We have a consumable cost estimator in our online program. And they can be helpful. Um, they do talk about, you know, you are working many times off of a number of people using the building. And I would just uh, caution you there to be careful. It doesn't say, it didn't say number of employees. It's number of people using the building. Why? Because it's not just employees using those bathrooms sometimes, especially in government agencies and so on. It can be tons of the public. So it's an idea of the number of people using the building on a regular basis. So those calculators available are available. That's the second thing. But even there, sometimes it can be you want to have some kind of confirmation that your numbers are good. Um, by the way, that's the third thing I want to say. Make sure that you have some provision, that if you're going to have to provide them, that, you know, it's one of these things where there's an asterisk and the, the point is made that these prices are subject to change because if your supply costs change, that you're going to have to reflect that in the prices that you uh, charge them. That's, that's an important provision anyway. What's the next thing? Well, here's another idea. What if you said to your building owner or manager that, that you're bidding on, you know, one of the things I want to do is make sure we get a good figure so I don't charge you too much and I don't want to charge you too little. I want to charge you a fair amount. Would you have, for example, uh, your last 12 or 24 months of history of your company of, of buying the products that you needed here? Do you have a, a purchase record that, you could, that I could take a look at with you and we could kind of see how much you order? Get kind of a track record of your usage of those different items. That might be helpful. Um, but what if they said to you, no, we don't have any records, or you can't see the records, or we don't have them, we don't keep them. Um, or some other contractor had them, we have no idea. Well, that's another pickle. So here's another idea. Um, maybe you could say to them, is it possible that we could, for example, just to make sure that we get this right for you, take the first few months here to kind of see how much you're going through. Now, for the first few months, we'll charge you by case at a very good rate. But we'll charge you by case on a, on a separate line item. And then once we start to get a track record to see your usage, then let's you and I sit down and we'll talk about how much you're using and how much our monthly charge would be and we'll put it in our main price at that point and how would that be. And sometimes folks have been open to that uh, with us over the years. We used to try to track it for a while and that worked out all right. And again, always remembering to have a provision that if your costs change, that the prices for those supplies are subject to change. These are some strategies that you can use when you're put into a situation where you really feel like you have to include, for example, um, consumable supplies as something you provide to your customer. I hope that's been helpful. It is a diff difficult challenge, but some of these tools and strategies go a long way to help with that. That's it for today. Now, next time, I'm going to tell you about something that you can include on your website and you can include in your marketing, and it goes light years in helping to create a more personal relationship, more than just a corporate relationship, a more personal relationship or connection between you and your customers or you and your prospective clients that you'd like to get. Until then, remember, you can do this. You really can.